Okay, so suppose we have 4 times 7, which is 28. Remember that dot means multiply of 4 times 12. That gives us 48. Again, we talked about this before. What's 4 times A? We don't know, right? We can't just say um, 40 or 35 or whatever. We don't know what A is. And so, um, just like the last lesson, this is actually just like multiplying two variables together. 4 times A, we can eliminate the multiplication sign and just write 4A or A times B. We can actually eliminate that multiplication sign and just write AB. They mean exactly the same thing. AB means A times B. 7Y means 7 times Y. They're the same thing. But it's shorter. And in math, we want to get shorter. We want to be simpler. Negative 6.2 times N, we can rewrite as negative 6.2N. Again, each time you notice, the multiplication sign is going away. And uh, as a refresher, just like we talked about last time, if you have two numbers next to each other and they're in parentheses, that means multiply. And therefore, if you had something like this, and we talked about before too, the number out front doesn't have to be in parentheses, but the next number, when it is, that means multiply. So all of this means multiply, and therefore 4a, we can, 4 times a, we can just write as 4a. 3 times b, we can write as 3b, so on and so forth. So the name of this lesson is, Simplify a constant times a variable. Now guess what? There's a couple cases, there's a couple examples on here where they aren't variables but they act like variables and we're going to look at that together. So C a lot of times in math means constant. So if we have a constant times a variable and most of the time we use X then we can just write it as CX. In other words just get rid of that multiplication sign and we know that when those two things are next to each other that means multiply. So let's look at this example together. 8 times x, if we simplify that, okay, and remember simplify means make as short and simple as possible, we can get rid of the multiplication sign and just have 8x. 8x means 8 times x. So let's say x was 10. Then what would 8x be? We're getting hopping ahead a little bit here, but if x was 10, 8 times 10 would give you 80, right? But we don't know what x is, so we can't write that. But that's just an example. Sometimes it helps to plug in numbers for variables, just so you can understand what's going on. Okay, next example. What number times r gives you negative 1.9r? Well, all we actually did is get rid of the multiplication sign, right? And if that's true, then these two numbers must be the same. Therefore, the answer is negative 1.9. Negative 1.9 times r gives you negative 1.9r. Okay, 5 halves times what gives you 5 halves a? Well, if we're just getting rid of the multiplication sign, then that means that this and this must be the same, and therefore the answer is a. How about 3 times, and again, this is focusing mostly on 2, but we're going to do 3 this time. 3 times r times s gives you what if you simplify it or make it shorter? Well, Actually, all you can do is kind of ignore these multiplication signs, right? Then you have 3RS, and therefore we know what goes in the box, 3RS. Let's look at some more examples. Pi times R. Now, that looks like two variables, right? And in a way, we're going to see in the uh, next lesson, we can treat these kind of like variables, uh, at, like pi and E and stuff. But pi is a constant, okay? It's 3.14 and it goes on and on and on and on. But it's a number that stays the same. I mean, you can't make it equal to 4 or 5 or whatever. So it is a constant. Anyways, again, what we can do is we can kind of just ignore um, this multiplication sign, right? And just write pi r. And pi r means what? Anybody know? It means pi times r. And you'll see that a lot. You'll see that, for example, in... Um, the circumference equation, circumference equals 2 pi r, that means 2 times pi times the radius, or area equals pi r squared. And that just means multiplying. Okay, so remember I talked about, uh, well, let's look at, let's look at, well, we'll move on to a couple more examples in a second. E, E is equal to approximately 2.718 so it doesn't change either so it's actually a constant as well so again the way we can treat this is um, we can kinda just eliminate the multiplication sign and bring these two together and therefore the answer is EX okay and I will say this guys um, you might be thinking oh what if I wrote XE 
Nah, we don't do that, okay? We, we put the constant before the variable. Um, now, if you wrote that, I would know what you meant, but kind of like if you're speaking English and you say, uh, let's say you're saying the horse is drinking water, and then, but you said drinking water is the horse. We just don't say that, right? It's just more normal and more natural to put the constant before the variable, so it's the same concept. Okay, um, all right, so we're going to treat anytime you have a regular number, like a number you're actually used to that doesn't have a symbol attached to it, and then a, we, some people say weird number, but a number that does have a symbol attached to it, like e or pi or any other number like that, we treat it like a variable, even though it's not a variable, it's a constant. So if we treat it like a variable, then we can actually simplify it just the same way. So therefore, 27 times e, we can ignore the multiplication sign and bring these two together. And the answer is 27e. And again, let me say this. Um, do not write e27, okay? That just never, ever happens, okay? That does not... I mean, I guess it kind of does mean e times 27, but think about it this way. What if you put the multiplication sign like that? Then that would be e times 2 times 7. So it's kind of ambiguous, meaning we don't know what it means. But when we put the 27 first and then the e, we know exactly what it means. It means 27 times e. So anytime you have an e or a pi or whatever, put it last. Don't put it first. And like I said, treat it like a variable even though it's a not. So that's why I threw it into this lesson. It's the same steps. So if we have 4 times pi, we can eliminate the multiplication sign bring these two together and the answer is 4 pi and 4 pi means what doesn't mean add subtract or divide it means multiply so 4 pi means 4 times pi and that's it for this lesson the name of this lesson is simplifying a constant times a variable and in a couple cases we use pi and e like variables so anytime you have a regular number you put put it first and then put the variable or the e or the pi second so therefore c some number say 10 or 7 times a variable or e or pi or s some other symbol is equal to that number 10 or 7 or whatever times that symbol and you don't have to put the multiplication sign you just write cx or 10 pi or 5y or whatever so that's it for this lesson and in the future we're going to look at multiplying a variable first and then a constant and how we can switch those around.